quite chilly, I can imagine. Um, as Paul said, the British weather promised something a little bit better than this, but we won't hold it against it because we're quite used to the rain and the miserable weather. Um, once again, just before I speak to you all, and I won't speak for too long because I appreciate that it's rather cold, um, I would just like to open up my speaking uh, with the Lord's Prayer. We are a Christian nation. Um, Britain First is a Christian movement. It is comprised of people from all faiths and none. We have many Christians in the movement, of course. We also have people from all other faiths. Sikh, Hindu, Jews, atheists. It doesn't matter. The common, the common denominator here is that we all love our country, all love our people. It's funny, there is a bit of a void when it comes to the religions that form our movement. We don't happen to have any Muslim members just yet. I don't think that's going to change anytime soon, but uh, when you have an ideology that refuses to integrate with anyone else in the world other than their own people, I think we can pretty much write them off. So uh, no real love lost there. But um, if, you, if you choose to, then I would invite you to join me to bow your heads and say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And for the first time ever, we've held a march, a protest march in a town. And you know what? The police have been cooperative. They've been fair. They've been reasonable. And I can tell you now, that's the first time that's happened. So big round of applause for the police. The police on this occasion have been fair and reasonable and impartial. <laughs> you can all see that our type of politics is on the rise. Patriotism is on the rise. We've seen it in the general election two years ago where UKIP got four million votes. Four million votes. One seat in Parliament, but four million votes. That was a gigantic groundswell of patriotic discontent in this country. It just shows there's millions and millions and millions of people in this country who are sick to death. We've been treated like second class citizens in a country that they've worked for, in a country they've built, in a country their families over the centuries have sacrificed and died for. We have had enough. Yeah. We've also seen with Brexit you know, I cannot explain to you the happiness I felt. I stayed up till six in the morning and it was a sunny day the next day. So I was sitting there completely exhausted from watching all the coverage, but I had the sun beaming down on me and I thought this is a new dawn for Britain. This is a new dawn from the West and it's all uphill since now to actually have thought that we had the ability and the courage and the patriotism to vote ourselves out of the corrupt leftist European Union that's flooding our continent with migrants, making us second class citizens, taking the sovereignty that was hard won at the Battle of Britain, at Normandy and so on. We actually have freed ourselves from the European Union. So God bless the British people. It's an amazing uh, result. But it just shows you. UKIP, that four million votes, Brexit, and then we had in America. Who stayed up to watch that till God knows what time in the morning? Like I said, I've been winding all the leftists up, all them scum that are around there, Labour Party, and saying, how does it feel? The most powerful man in the world is a right-wing extremist. Women in Islam are worth that. In Islam, I'm worth nothing. Nothing at all. I'm a second class citizen, and the false prophet, Muhammad, said that I'm deficient in intelligence. So, uh, I mean, that's quite something coming from a 50 year old man who was illiterate and had a child bride. I don't know if he thinks I'm deficient in intelligence or the other way around, but that's what the Muslim community, and that's how women are treated. 
Now all this nonsense about the veil is liberating. What's liberating about having to cover up head to toe like a bin bag? There's nothing liberating about that. I don't need to cover up. And if they're worried about any of our men sexually attacking their women if they don't cover up, don't you bloody worry, because our men are civilised and we don't need to do those kind of things. The time has come. And it's coming and the tides really are turning and you can see it. Which one of you here would rather be called a little name, sticks and stones, and have their children abused as a result of staying silent? Because let me tell you right now, they can call us what they want, but we have a duty to not let them bully us. We're giving them our kids. Do you know, every one of us that stays silent and does nothing, we might as well take the little precious hands of our children and put them into the hands of a dirty, horrible, Muslim grooming paedophile because our silence has amounted to decades of kids being abused. These kids have had their lives taken, their innocence taken. They've got nothing left. Some of these kids have had children by these men because they've been raped. I saw a report about a girl in Telford who bore a child from so many different grooming attacks she didn't know who the father was. There were nine suspects and DNA testing showed it wasn't any of the nine. Just put that into your minds for a minute. It's a horrible thought and we don't want to process it. We don't want to process that because then we think, oh, what if that was my daughter? Yeah, exactly. Picture it. Picture your daughter coming home and saying, this is what's happened to me and I'm bearing a child from nine monsters, I don't even know which one. What's everyone doing? Where is everyone? Why are we the only people standing here sticking up for these kids? If it was one of mine, these horrible bastards would be hanging from a lamppost. Yeah. We have a duty and Britain First will give you all a voice. We'll give you all a voice. This movement is a young movement. It started with this man here and a couple of others who just said, you know what, enough's enough. We need to do something, no one's gonna do it. And let me tell you, no one else is gonna do it. You can look around this country, there is no other movement that will stand here and say what I'm saying to you now, none. No one will say it, no one. There's a person, he'll say it, and you'll say it. People, but movement, there's no one. So collectively, we need to come together. And that's what Britain First is. It's all of ours. It's mine, it's yours, and it's as much yours as it is mine. It's our family, it's our bond. It will bring us together. We need to unite and we need to do it now. Not say, oh, well, next weekend the X Factor's on or the football's on so we can't make it. We have to come out and do something now. Because I'm telling you, right now, somewhere in this country, there will be a young girl who is being ploughed with alcohol and ploughed with drugs like heroin and crack and is being systematically targeted and raped. Right now, as I stand here, that is happening. And I don't care who this little girl is or little boy, she's not mine and she's not yours. But I tell you what, I would die for every single one of the kids in this country. And that is what we need to take going forward. <laughs> We just can't afford to stay silent anymore. We just can't. And the tides are turning. Look across Europe. Things are changing. People are rising up. People have had enough. And I am inviting every single one of you to stand with me. The only way I will end this fight is if I'm taken out of it. And I'm telling you now, they can lock me up, they've locked up Paul, they've arrested me, they can come after us as much as they like. It will never, ever stop me. It will never stop Paul, and I hope to God it will never stop all of you. Stand with me, my brothers and sisters, and let's, if no one else is going to do it, we will look after our kids and take back our country. <laughs> But where, where is this going to end? What do you think is going to happen? We've got run it out of time. We've got no time left. I've said, when I come out of Pentonville Prison in mid-January, I put out a video and I said, for God's sake, get off your backsides and do something. We are running out of time. Doing nothing, sitting on the sidelines is no longer an option. 
by sitting on the sidelines doing nothing. You are just as bad, because you know what's going on, you are just as bad as these traitors who are deliberately undermining our country in every way they can.